This is Dudley, and Dudley likes to bark like crazy when people come to the door. Now, I did another video when I first showed up, kind of showing the guardians how they can actually help him, but he was so fearful and uh, upset about it, it didn't really help that well. Uh, I don't think it would be as helpful as this one's going to be. So what we want to do is we want to teach him how we want him to behave when people come to the door. Now, this is an encapsulation of what I do as a dog behaviorist, is I try to recreate situations where the dog has exhibited behavior that we don't like, where I can control all the environment and all the factors, and I remove as much, and now you give me the smile. I was trying to get the smile, a picture of this with his mouth open, but yes. Um, so what I try to do is recreate the situation where I make it the easiest capacity possible. Now the guardians have been uh, asking to go move away from the door and doing different things. Problem with that is it's micromanaging. We can do that. And that's where a little bit of what we're gonna do, but we're just gonna train him to go to uh, an area right next to the door. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get up and move over there. The guardian's actually gonna come and sit where I am, and I'm gonna explain this from that vantage point. So let's go ahead and have you come over here, buddy. Now, as you can see, we have a little blanket here, and the guardians have already started practicing pillow, asking him to come over there. The pillow is the word that they've assigned. So what we do is I want him to uh, get used to going there, I could, well, pillow. Now, if your dog doesn't know how to go in there, the way that I do this is, hey, buddy, go get it. Come on, go get it. I actually have to throw one. Okay, so I'm not doing that. I'm just doing that to get him off. So what I would do to train him to go to pillow, let's come to me, is just let him see that I throw one. Say pillow when he goes onto it. Now, this is a blanket. If you're going to use a dog pillow or a blanket or something like that, make sure it is solid colored, preferably a light gray, a white, or a light cream. Dog's eyes are, uh, they're colorblind. And green is actually in the real house, but sometimes they get a little confused, so I prefer those light colors. Um, all right, so he went there. What, now, uh, the guardians uh, have taught him to stay in the old way of teaching you stay, where you stay, stay. I'm guessing that's kind of what you did, right? Yes. A version of it. So basically, that's how I originally taught my dogs to stay. And what I found is that actually teaches your dog what we call an auto-release. So I teach a dog to stay. I teach for the three Ds. First for duration, up to five minutes. Then, only then, do I start incorporating distance. Then I start incorporating distractions. And so this way, we make it easy for the dog to do kind of a version of what we're doing here. But for the stay, we're teaching them how to do it one step at a time. So what I'm going to do is, uh, uh, is I want to practice answering the door with the dog staying here. So um, we're not gonna use the sound. Eventually we could use the sound. We've been practicing. He barks anytime he hears the knock. So one of the things we're setting him up for that is to desensitize him. Every once in a while I have the guardians just knocking on doors or walls. And he was charging the door a while, but now he's starting to kind of realize just because there's a knock doesn't mean there's somebody at the door. So um, this helps desensitize and he stops reacting. So what I do is uh, tell him to go to the pillow and then go over the door. And I'm just clicking the deadbolt which is a sound that precedes you guys opening the door. I do a different version of this, I call it claiming the door, where I kind of move the dog away. But in this case, we want him to just practice being here while we're going through all the individual elements of answering the door. So now I'm gonna walk back away, and I can give him a treat and say pillow if I want. Now I'm gonna go again. So you can see his cortisol, lo cortisol levels are already starting to increase because you saw that he was comfortable with me and then suddenly he could, took a step away. Well, now we're activating this area around the door that gets him all worked up. And so now he has cortisol in his blood. So, uh, pillow. do the same thing. He was okay with this. He was okay with this is when I opened it last time as we came over. So I'm opening a crack and I'm closing it and I'm walking away. Yeah, buddy. You did great. Yeah. We just want you off of the pillow. Normally I wouldn't give him a treat like this. I'm doing this because it's for me. I don't think for you guys he's going to act the same way. You won't have to give this treat that I just gave. All right, so now we'll ask him to come back over here again. Oh. So I lowered myself and I turned a little bit sideways. That's easier for him. Pillow. 
Now, I, you don't have to make him sit or lie down. Down? Down. I'm just doing it for, right, for demonstration purposes so we can see if he gets up. But I want him sitting or lying down. Now, that's not necessarily one specific thing. But if he's standing there, that's kind of more of an action pose. All right, so we're going to do the same thing. Hey, Fred, come on in. And we walk away. Now, I'm not giving you a treat for this. You see, that's a core salt. Again, I'm a little bit jumpy. Ready? Let's how about we get you down. We're going to do the next stage here in a second. Can we lie down? Uh, chill, right? Chill. There we go. All right, so we're going to do it again. So that's the trick. So what we want to do is we want to work back up to that. So that was a pretty hard knock. Pillow. So what we want to do is, as all the knocking I told the guardians to do, independent of anybody at the door, we'll make that less intense. And in this situation, I'm putting it in a weird scenario. Normally the knock comes, then the rest, then the rest of those sounds. So I'm doing an inverted order. Uh, if you want to move away, that's fine. Uh, but when we're practicing this, we want him to learn to stay here. So um, I talked a little bit about the stay earlier, and I'm going to show you real quick how I teach the stay because I'd like you guys to brush up on it a little bit um, and have him practice staying here when you're not even walking towards the door. Again, we break the elements apart and help him practice in easy fasting. So when you're watching TV, tell him to come over here. Come here, buddy. Sit. Pillow. So the way I use stay is I have the treat that I'm going to give him in my hand I'm putting behind my back. We're giving a half distance between us. I'm going to say stop sign. I'm going to say stay. Stay. I count to whatever iteration is. I'm going to count to five in my head. When I get done, stay. Then I'm going to do the next time. I'm going to do 10 seconds. Stay. Stay. Now, let's say I practice 10 times, 5, 10, 15, 20, and you vary up the, uh, go at whatever your duration your dog can do. If you go from 5 to 10, and then you decide to go from 10 to 20, pillow, um, and he gets to 19, he gets up and walks away, that means you should back up and practice a couple at 17s. All right, so let's say I practice 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and I'm done practicing. I want to give him a release command. So you guys thought of what you'd like to use for your release command? The Guardians are using the word okay, which I don't like using because it's a top 50 US commonly used word. And I know dogs actually have gotten killed because they're waiting to cross the street with their guardian. Their guardian's talking on the phone and says okay, and the dog just lurch, gets clipped by a car. I say release, break, freedom, and parole. I have four dogs. Um, so do you like any of those words? Like break. Uh, that's okay. fine. That's so at fine. the end, when we're done, we're, and you can change it later if you want, but what I would do is when we're done, I just throw the street a couple feet away, break. So just throw it a far enough away we have to go up and take a couple steps. So you're going to practice five times, ten times, however many times you're going to practice. The last thing you do, the last treat you have, you toss a couple feet away, he goes and licks it up, and we say the word after it goes in his mouth. All we say the dog's word after it goes in their mouth, not before. We're kind of activating their, activating their pleasure receptors. So if I get a treat in my mouth and I hear release or break or whatever it is, I look a little bit more favorably upon that command. Pillow, that's passive training, which I talked about off camera. He did it on his own, I didn't. So if he goes over here on his own, reach over and pet him and say pillow, or give him a treat if you can. So eventually, uh, so going back to the stay, so first I teach the dog to stay until it will stay here for five minutes. And for dogs, not doing anything is very difficult. So because they start offering treat, why are you not giving me the treat? And it doesn't matter if he's looking at me, he can look anywhere he wants, because eventually the next step is when you're a uh, distance. So I put him in a stay and I take one step back, count to two, come back and give him the treat and say stay. Now, I start off by doing it this way. I take the number of steps back and I multiply it, I double it. So if I take three steps back, I would count to six. Four steps back, count to eight. That's how I start, but every dog is unique and there's nothing wrong with varying it up as you need to. But eventually you want to get to the point where you can walk far enough away where there's a wall and you step out of his line of sight and then you wait one second then come back to his line of sight, come back, give him the treat and say stay then walk back and go to the same one, and this time go out of sight for two seconds, three seconds, four. I had one dog, I had to go for a week's worth of one second stays. Because once I get to two seconds, he would get up and wander away. 
So always back up and go at your dog's rate of, rate of speed, not at the speed rate of speed we want to go. So once you get to the point where you're at, uh, you can have the dog outside of your line of sight for five minutes, then I'd like the guardians to actually practice when they go to the bathroom or get a drink of water or check something out in their you know, bedroom or whatever, put him in a stay so he practices being alone and then come back and release him. Uh, now when we're doing this exercise, once he has a good stay here, you're gonna give him a stay command and then go answer the door. And now he is doing two things. He's in the pillow position and he's doing the stay. And you can say if he had the door ahead of you, sell him pillow, but don't open the door until he's here first. If you try to open the door with him there, he looks at you as assisting him. Now again, the easiest way to do it is put him here in a pillow. Now you can practice the stay here. I wouldn't practice the stay when people are actually at the door. You can do that, but I would try to do that as infrequently as possible. The idea is when somebody's at the door, you stay in pillow. Not with a stay command, but that's part of the, the pillow exercise is you come and you wait in this location. And I wanted to wait here. So if it is some creepy person that's trying to do a home invasion, you have a home security system that are about 0.9. But if the distance will help it be less intense for him, so he's not going to be so, you know, just for us, everything, it's right there, it's more, we're, it's, you know, it's more intense, right? Uh, all right, and then eventually, uh, by desensitizing de him from the knocking and then having him practice going here, when we pretend or simulate answering the door with no one there. Then when we actually have somebody come to the door, I would have them text you. Don't have them knock. So when they get to the door, make sure you kind of go on the side so he can't see you through the window and text us. So let's say that now Fred has texted me, he's at the door. Pillow, I you know, tell him to go to pillow if he's not already pillow. Then I go over here. It's like, oh, are we doing the drill again? I remember we used to open the door when we went over there. That was just a stupid drill. When he gets to this one, maybe when you have an actual person, you keep the door here so he can't see through it. Have him come and sit right here outside of his line of sight. He, he probably can see it under the door. At this point, he's going to be more attracted to want to come in here. But if we don't use the knock, we don't get that spike of energy that is going to make him make it harder for him to listen. So basically, with this ritual, after a while, there'll be a knock at the door, and he'll come and sit here because we're going to uh, because that's what he's we condition him to do. Now, let me back up a step because I'm a little, getting a little bit confused on this, or confusing for I think when you're watching this later. So the first stage is just get him to come here. And just go ahead and walk to the door, jiggle the deadbolt, and then come back and say pillow. Next stage, go back, jiggle the deadbolt and the handle, then come back here and say pillow. Third stage, just jiggle it and open it, just crack it and then close it, come back, pillow. And then we're going to open it progressively more and more. Then we're going to jiggle the handle for the next door, the outside door, come back and say pillow. Once we've done all those, and he just stays here, and he's nice. Like you see, right now he's interested in me, but he's relaxed. He's sitting, he's kind of sitting a little bit on his heel, on his hip, so it tells me he's relaxed. If he's really alert, he's going to be standing and he's going to be ready to launch forward. That would take an extra movement to get up. So that tells me, this tells me he's more relaxed. So then the next thing is I'm going to do is after I've done this and he's like drill, 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 then I'm going to go and I'm going to do it this time. We'll see if we can get him to stay without while I'm knocking. This would best be done with a lot more iterations. So I walk back. And I can celebrate by petting or saying pillow. Well, we say pillow either way, but give him a treat. Let's try that again. So we're conditioning him that when I may, that this is the behavior that we want you to have when we answer the door. We're not chastising him because that's probably what happens. He's barking. You're kind of. Hey man, call, tell him to relax, I got it, and we're, or go sit here, go sit there. We're setting him up for success by teaching him all the steps, independent of anybody at the door. And then we're incorporating the knock, and eventually you want to do the knock like you're really like you're the police doing a you know, search warrant knock. And eventually he just, and combined with all the other stuff that we've done, the knock is no longer a reactor for him. Uh, and answering the door is no longer reactive. I just sit here, go ahead and knock. So you see he became interested, but he's not barking and, and, and that excitement level isn't spiking. Pillow. And that was a great example. He came to pillow, so I definitely pillow, want to reward that. So if you knock and he goes here, make sure you give, and if you don't have a treat, pillow. And be careful how you pet him. Sometimes we, if you're really fast, we can kind of get him worked up. So pillow. Try to pet him kind of in a calm way. Just say pillow once. A lot of people want to say pillow each time they pet. And the dog thinks that's gibberish. 
if you do have a treat, it's even better. Hello. So after enough time, like I said, people come to your door, he'll come here, he's relaxed because we've we put him in a position to succeed by teaching him each step along the way, desensitizing him from the excitement stage, and put uh, Dudley here in a position to succeed. Can you shake for me? You know a shake? Shake? There we go. This is Dudley. This is some tips and tricks you can use if your dog uh, likes to bark and rush the door.